Hi everyone and welcome back to Diabetes Diet Guy. I'm Mark, a diabetes specialist dietitian. And today we are continuing with our medication series looking at DPP-4 inhibitors. What are DPP-4 inhibitors? Dipeptidyl peptidase 4 inhibitors, otherwise known as DPP-4 inhibitors, are a type of oral medication used in type 2 diabetes. When you eat, your body releases satiety hormones, which just means makes you feel full, to indicate that your body doesn't need any more food or drink. One of these types of hormones are called incretin hormones. Examples of these hormones are glucagon-like peptide 1, or GLP-1, which we've actually visited in one of our previous medication videos as injecting this hormone is a type of diabetes treatment. Another example is gastric inhibitory polypeptide or GIP. Not only do these hormones indicate that you are full, they also slow down the absorption of food through your digestive tract. This is important, particularly when looking at carbohydrate containing food, because it's these foods that increase your blood glucose levels in diabetes. Therefore, by slowing down the absorption of carbohydrates, you reduce the potential for peaks between meals in your blood glucose levels. So essentially, satiety-inducing hormones push your body from a pre-absorbative to a post-absorbative state. After a period of time, these post-absorbative hormones or satiety-inducing hormones, like GLP-1 or GIP, need to be cleared in order to initiate the hunger response to make you want to eat again later. And this is the job of DPP-4 hormones. So these exist in your body naturally. They come in and they clear the incretin hormones to allow that hunger response to be reinitiated, which then makes you want to eat later, which essentially allows you to get the energy and the nutrients that your body requires to conduct its daily activities. Therefore, DPP-4 inhibitors slow down the action of DPP-4 hormones in clearing those post-absorbative hormones that help you remain fuller for longer. We usually call this class of medications the glyptins. Examples include cyptogliptin, alogliptin, linagliptin, and vildagliptin. Benefits of using DPP-4 inhibitors. One nice benefit of using DPP-4 inhibitors is they generally only require once a day dosage. Therefore, the medication burden is quite low with these. You can also expect a reduction in your HbA1c from anywhere between 0.4 to 1% in old terms, which equates to about 5 to 11 millimoles per mole in the new values. Linagliptin also gives us quite a lot of flexibility when using this class of medications because it doesn't need to be adjusted for renal failure. They are also weight neutral or maybe even induce a small amount of weight loss. This is important in type 2 diabetes where most people who go on to develop disease generally have too much fat around the liver, pancreas or in the subcutaneous tissue, so essentially are overweight or obese. DPP-4s are also safe to use in cardiovascular disease, although there's no evidence to show that they give additional benefit. And finally, they have a very low risk of hypoglycemia, so patients do not need to test their blood glucose levels whilst taking this medication class. Side effects of using DPP-4 inhibitors. There are some potential side effects of using DPP-4 inhibitors. Gastrointestinal symptoms are the most common because of the fact that they slow down the breakdown of those post-absorbative satiety-inducing hormones. Therefore, some people may experience some nausea, diarrhea, an upset stomach, and feelings of bloating. As with any medication class, there are other side effects. We would encourage you to speak with your diabetes team or read the label to make sure that you're well informed. When not to use DPP-4 inhibitors. Anyone with any issues of the pancreas, liver, or kidneys may need to reduce their dose or stop taking this class of medications altogether. If you have any concerns, speak with your GP or medical team about your options. And that's DPP-4 inhibitors. If you have any further questions or want to find out more about how to manage your diabetes, head over to the blog at diabetesdietguide.com if you're not already watching or reading on the website. If you need an extra helping hand, we also offer consultancy services on a one-to-one -one basis and also offer programs which act as step-by-step -step guides about managing your diabetes, weight, and general health. Thanks for listening, everyone, and we'll see you at the next video.